What's up, YouTube? Today, I want to talk about Serum 2's custom curves. So these are very similar to Vital's Mod Remaps and Phase Plant's Remap system, but I don't want to do too much comparisons. I kind of just want to educate you on the tool and then you can decide if you want to use it or not. So anyway, today I want to show you a couple of examples of how you could use the custom curve. It's a pretty complex thing when you start applying it, so you can do so many different things with it. But I want to show you a couple of examples which I like to use it with, so that you can use it in your sound design patches uh, your own way. So anyway, let's dive in and have a look. So in Serum 1, the modulation system had these curves where you could create these exponential or logarithmic style curves for the modulation. And one thing that they've actually added in Serum 2, if we double click on this, we're not just limited to these kinds of curves. We can actually draw our own custom transfer curve for that modulation. So it's a little bit complex if you don't really know what's happening here. But I think the easiest way to kind of break this down would be to apply something like a macro to a couple of different modulation destinations. And then what we can do is we can play with the different curves for each of those. And you can kind of see what I'm talking about. One of my favorite things to do with the remaps or custom curves is to create a kind of filter which mixes in. So I'm gonna leave this filter as is because I often end up doing this with effects. So let's jump into the effects over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply, let's just go with macro number eight because we're gonna use this for just like a bunch of effects which we can, we can use a single macro to control like a bunch of different effects in the patch. So we're gonna drag this onto the mix as well as the cutoff. But with this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it down like this. So as we turn up the macro, it mixes in the filter and turns down the cutoff frequency. We can actually give it a bit of resonance control as well, maybe not all the way. So if we jump into the matrix, I guess the easiest way to explain how this kind of setup would work, on the uh, dry wet modulation, we can create a system where at the beginning of the macro, there's no effects and that mix quickly sweeps in as we turn the macro up. So it's almost like the filter is bypassed and then as we turn up the macro, you can actually see the value of the input compared to the output displayed by this green dot over here. And so as we turn it, by the time it kind of hits a value of six, that filter is kind of already mixed in. So this is a nice way of being able to create a sound that's like clean, but then as you start modulating the macro, a bunch of other effects suddenly jump in. What we can do also is do a similar thing with that resonance. We can do a similar thing with that resonance. So like here, for example, I don't want the resonance to sweep linearly. I kind of want it to be um, a little bit more drastic. And then with the frequency, we can kind of do something like this. So the sound is clean. And then as we start modulating it, we can actually maybe make this a little bit less drastic. It feels like it kicks in a bit quick. Okay, let's link this to a bunch of other effects. I like to use this with stuff like delays and reverbs because it's kind of like you can have just the clean sound and then if you want some effects, it turns them all on and then it gives you a kind of sweep of a variety of different sounds, right? So with the mix, let's set this to 50%. And then again, here in the matrix, we're gonna do a similar thing that we did with that filter. I've actually got a clip here, which I've prepared. Um, I'll do a tutorial on the clip section and all the other sections in the future, but I'm just gonna play this so that we've got some sound going through.
Okay, so the next way I like to use uh, remaps and custom curves is to create a system where the filter is being modulated, but then as we start turning the macro, it kind of turns that modulation off and kind of gives us free control over that filter. So let's just quickly draw in an LFO on this filter over here. Uh, I'll set this to free. Okay, with this one, let's use macro number one. Let's rename this to effects. Let's assign macro one to the filter as well. And then let's also jump into the matrix over here. So now what we want to do is we want to look for the modulation here where we created LFO one to filter one frequency. And we want to set the sidechain modulation input to that macro, right? And then here we have another mod remap or custom curve. And with this one, we want to do a, same, a similar thing that we did with that dry wet mix system, but we want to do it in reverse. So now when we play, So you see, as we sort of engage that macro and as we sort of start turning that macro, the modulation turns off. And then as we turn it down, it kind of kicks into place, right? Okay, so these have all been pretty basic stuff that you could kind of hack together with um, stuff that kind of already existed, not exactly so specific you know you could kind of create those very sharp curves to do quite similar things with like these filters and that kind of thing but the next technique is where uh, mod remaps and custom curves truly shines and so this is kind of creating what i call state switches or you know say for example if you have a patch like this with a saw wave let's say for example we want a macro where we can sweep that's going to switch between these different oscillators, like which one is, is going through that filter, right? Kind of turning them on and off by just sweeping the macro. We can do that now with the new curve system. So the concept is to modulate the levels of each of these oscillators. So just to start it off, what I'm gonna do is just enable just a basic saw wave on each one, and we can tune them so that we know what's what when we're setting this up. So it'll be zero, one, two, three, right? And then let's just use this macro for now, macro number five, but you can choose whichever macro you want, right? And then what we're gonna do is we wanna just drop this onto all of these levels. So right now, just turning up the macro is gonna be pretty noisy. It's just, all it's gonna do is it's just gonna turn up and it's gonna kind of create a big octave chord of saws, which we don't want. We want in the first quadrant of the macro, we want it to, this level to be 100%. And then as we turn it up into the second quadrant, we want this level to be 100% and this one to go down again, right? Um, so we can either jump into the matrix and set it up there, but there's actually a quicker way to jump into the custom curves just from this panel by right-clicking on any modulation destination thing. And then you get this edit custom curve here, and that just opens it up, which is really, really good for workflow, to be honest. Um, here, what we wanna do is we wanna set this grid to, let's say four, um, because that's the amount of states that we want to create in the switch. So in the first state, this level must be 100% and all of the other ones at zero. And then we just go here, edit custom curve, first state at zero, second one at 100%. You don't necessarily have to only do uh, sort of binaries, zero and 100%. You can do a bunch of weird things in between. Um, and it's actually really cool to just set up these really crazy patches where you kind of just jump in and just hold shift and step all of your modulations in the patch and then just sweep through the macros and kind of see what crazy things you can come up with. But that's kind of more happy accidents, randomization kind of stuff, you know? This system is really cool to set up because you could have a spectral oscillator loaded here, a granular oscillator loaded here, and just switch between them with a macro, 
which you can then assign to an LFO or a random or whatever the case is. Okay, so second state, this would be the third state and the fourth state. We could do five with a noise as well, but this is more of a lead sound, so I'm just gonna stick to these ones. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, the only thing is that these aren't going through to the filter yet, so we can just assign that like this. Okay, so by default, if you hold shift, it doesn't actually edit that last point. And that is actually crucial because you want that last point. You see here, this little point that's hiding here, you want that to be at zero. Otherwise you get that weird chord right at the end of the sweep. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so now what we could do is we can jump in here and create different sounds for each of these, like a granular, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just going to set these each to like a sine wave and then just set up some cross modulation between them. So here, for example, we can set up FM from sub. And then with this one, we can set up like a ED, which is like the Serum 1 kind of FM. Uh, we can set this up from oscillator C. Okay, so another thing in Serum 2 now is we can actually modulate the macros. So we could set up an LFO to modulate this macro. And let's set this to free. Or we could set it to like a random. I'm going to set up another random on that, on this macro as well. But what we want to do is we want to set this one to bipolar so that it can sometimes go below zero. And so what that's going to do is it's going to clamp the value at zero and sometimes do the modulation or sometimes give us some kind of curved randomization. You can also use this to kind of switch between various different modulations. So like, let's say for example, sometimes we want an envelope on like one of the sine waves, you know? What we can do is we can kind of create a very sharp envelope, set it to like the pitch. Uh, let's set it to unipolar. So like we could create another one here, like a switch. Let's say I'm gonna do envelope two and envelope three, both on the pitch. And then this one we can create an attack in the matrix, coarse pitch and coarse pitch. Let's set macro six to switch between them. But here with this one, what we can do is we can kind of create something where it fades like this to zero. And then here, it fades from zero with that kind of curve. That could be cool. So in the middle, there's no modulation. And then side by side, we have either a pluck or a ramp. And then we can randomize this with the Y of that random. Let's try some of the uh, some of the other filters. So like here for example, let's say we have this kind of stepped pattern and we want to use this to generate like random values for all of these oscillators. We can just drop them onto 
like the octaves like this, then just edit custom curve, and then just do random stuff here. And now it's gonna be kind of semi-random. The pattern will be the same, but um, each of these oscillators will be receiving a different value. And so the cool thing is now most of that crazy complex stuff, the routing and all that kind of stuff is kind of just controlled within these four LFOs, not even much these middle two, mainly just LFO one and four. So we kind of just jump in there, change these steps, holding shift to kind of like create these stepped patterns. And it kind of just always just generates this weird glitchy sounds, right? <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Okay, so I think that's about sums it up. Um, I'm sure you guys can understand exactly what's happening with the custom curves now so that you can apply them in your own patches and your own uh, things. And even if you didn't know about the fact that they existed in Vital or Phase Plant, I'm sure you're gonna use them now. So yeah, I'm also gonna be uploading these two presets that I created, that kind of more um, melodic lead thing in the beginning and then this more developed weird kind of FM rack. Um, I'm going to be uploading these two presets to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. Or if you just want to support what I do here, um, also just check out my Patreon. That's the best way to do so. So anyway, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the channel and I will see you guys next time. Cheers.